You know what sucks? Inflation. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make two cheap vegan meals that are as delicious as they are budget friendly. They're also both easy one pot meals. So, you know, less time cooking, less time cleaning. So you can free up time for what really matters in life. You know, binge watching Love Island. Let's dive right into the first recipe. We are making Tuscan kale and white bean soup. This is really similar to the vegan soup of Toscana that I've made on the channel before. Only instead of using vegan Italian sausage, we are going whole foods plant-based, baby. We're going to use beans. And that's gonna make the recipe much more affordable. In general, beans are a great staple when you're trying to adhere to a budget when planning meals. It's also packed with veggies, so this is the perfect recipe if you are craving that big party bowl of comfort, but you still want it to be healthy, you don't wanna feel weighed down afterwards. Let's go ahead and chop up our mirepoix first. I just happen to have red onions right now. Any kind of onion would work, finely dice that. Then I've got some celery and carrot. These you can dice depending on how chunky you prefer your soups to be. Garlic I'm obsessed with, so I'm gonna use a whole head of minced garlic. Tuscan kale or the lacinato kale works a little bit better in this recipe as opposed to curly kale. I just think it's a little bit more tender, a little bit less bitter. Another great thing about the lacinato kale is you can just stack the leaves since they're flat. My personal preference for this recipe and for soups in general is to use Yukon Gold or some kind of waxy variety of potato just because they hold their shape a little bit better when they're cooked in liquids, whereas a starchier potato like a russet, they kind of want to disintegrate if you're not careful about your cook time. Whether you peel these or not is up to you. I personally do not like the texture of potato skin, so I'm gonna go ahead and peel these and then chop them. You can use Great Northern, butter beans. I'm using cannellini beans. You could probably use any variety of bean actually. I just like the white beans because they're really nice and creamy. They kind of break down a little bit into the soup and they help to thicken it up. Drain these, give them a good thorough rinse. It's time to go ahead and start cooking our soup. You just want a big stock pot, something with a heavy bottom. Drizzle in some olive oil and I like to use quite a lot of red pepper flakes, but obviously if you don't like spice, just leave those out. If you wanted to keep this on the lower fat side, you could just saute in vegetable broth or water. I like to add in my celery and diced onions at the same time. Saute those for a few minutes and once the onion starts to take on just a little bit of color, that's when I go in with my garlic and my carrots. After sauteing those for a few minutes, I add in my potatoes and my drained rinsed beans. And then I add in enough vegetable broth to cover those. If you watch a lot of my videos, you'll know I'm a big fan of using a chicken style vegetable broth. And that's what I like to use for my regular vegan soup of Toscana with the Italian sausage, just to make it taste really savory and meaty. But in this recipe, I actually think any kind of vegetable broth would work just fine. I do also like to add in some dried herbs, in this case, some rosemary, some thyme, and some basil. If you have fresh herbs, feel free to substitute in those. I just have a bad habit of buying fresh herbs and then using a very small amount for one recipe and then the rest goes bad. So I like just like to use dried herbs. I'm gonna bring that up to a gentle boil and then you're gonna reduce the heat to low and let it simmer for 20-ish minutes or however long until the potatoes are tender. And now you're gonna add in your fresh kale and cook that for just a few minutes until it's wilted down. If you want your kale to be really, really soft, you can add it in at an earlier stage too, like along with the potatoes. A finishing touch that I like to add right at the end is about a cup of homemade cashew cream. You could use really any kind of store-bought, plain unsweetened plant milk that you like that you think would go well in a savory dish. Or you could use like a vegan heavy whipping cream substitute. I know Silk makes one. But adding a little bit of something creamy helps tie everything together. It gives the soup more body and just makes it taste a bit more like comfort food, but I just stir that in at the end and heat it through. All right, so I'm interested to see right off the bat how this differs from the Zupa Toscana with the greasy sausage in it. Mm, it's so cozy. There are so many flavors and textures. It tastes like coming home from playing at your friend's house, <laughs> like after school and eating dinner. I don't know why. It just tastes like something that a mom would make. I will take that as a compliment. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> very like weirdly nostalgic, even though I don't, I've never, I never ate this as a kid. Do you have a preference between this one and the classic vegan soup Toscana with the sausage and? I think weirdly I like this one more and I only say weirdly because I'm very prone to liking the more processed garbagey food. That's normal. Yeah, it's just so wholesome. Yeah, I don't think it's missing out on any flavor either. Could top it with some vegan Parmesan. Ooh, yeah, that would be really good. I'm gonna take a quick pause to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Helix Sleep. Everyone knows sleep is extremely important, which is why we love Helix. 
They make premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your sleep needs. Helix knows everyone's different, which is why they created the Sleep Quiz, which is a quick online quiz that matches you with your perfect mattress based on your sleep preferences. If you sleep with a partner like us, you can both take the Sleep Quiz and Helix will match you with the mattress. That's a great middle ground for the both of you. Based on our results, we were matched with the Helix Dawn Lux. This mattress is the perfect compromise for both of us because Eric's a side sleeper and I sleep on my back, but we both like a firm mattress. We also opted for the Glaciotex cooling cover, which is like a sewn-on mattress cover that keeps you really cool throughout the night. We've had our Helix mattress for about two months now and we absolutely love it. It's the perfect balance of firmness and squish, so our backs are supportive, but we don't feel like we're sleeping on a rock. <laughs> Our previous mattress was getting a little old and I didn't really realize how uncomfortable it had become until we started sleeping on the Helix. And now I just couldn't imagine going back. Getting into bed is like an exciting thing every night. You can buy your Helix mattress online, which is way more convenient than having to go into an actual mattress store, which can be overwhelming. And even better, your mattress gets delivered right to your door for free in the United States. When it gets delivered, it comes rolled up and in a box so you can bring it inside super easily. It's also a breeze to set up. You just need to unroll it, unwrap it, and give it some time to inflate back to its original shape. Bingo bango, you got a mattress. When you buy a Helix mattress, you get a 100 night sleep trial and a 10 year warranty. They also have financing and flexible payment plan options. Buying a mattress is obviously like a really big deal, which is why Helix gives you more than three months to make sure you really, really love it. And if you don't, they'll come scoop it back up and you'll get your money back. If you're in need of a new mattress, give Helix a try for yourself. Click on the link below or go to helixsleep.com SVK for up to $200 off your mattress plus two free pillows. Now go get some sleep. Okay, the next budget-friendly recipe I have for you guys is a spiced carrot and lentil soup, and I have been making some variation of this soup for the better part of the last decade. Back in college, I would make this soup all the time. This comes together in one pot, and it has so many flavors. This is one of those recipes that tastes like you put in way more effort than you actually did. Let's go ahead and get our miso floss out of the way. The great thing about this recipe is that it's so flexible. You really don't have to precisely measure anything, and it pretty much just always comes out well. I like to use a box grater to grate my carrots because I find they kind of melt into the soup that way. Feel free to go ahead and just chop yours if you don't mind your soup being a little on the chunkier side. I added in two jalapenos. You can use a regular red or green bell pepper if you're not a fan of spicy food or you can use a jalapeno and just remove the seeds and the ribs and I also give those a fine dice. I happen to have small red onions right now so I used two of those but you could use a medium-sized white or yellow onion. Anything works and I just gave those a fine chop. Then of course I minced up a ton of garlic, another ingredient that you don't really have to measure precisely, just measure with your heart. Then I took about a one inch thumb of ginger. I'm still keeping my ginger in the freezer since I saw that hack on the Pickup Limes channel. Makes it super easy to grate. It looks like a lot when you grate it with a microplane, but if you pack it into a spoon, it's about a scant tablespoon. So that is all of our veggie prep work, and the rest of the flavor is going to come from using thyme and spices. You're gonna heat a heavy bottom stock pot over medium high heat. Go ahead and drizzle in a tablespoon or so of olive oil or you could use coconut oil. I love spicy food, so I'm gonna be sprinkling in about a fourth a teaspoon of red pepper flakes, but you can skip that or use less or more depending on your preference. Give those about a minute to bloom in the oil and that helps to extract all the flavor and the heat. And then you're gonna go in with your aromatic veggies, your onions, garlic, jalapenos, and minced or grated ginger. And here is a key step in this recipe to really get the most flavor out of your veggies. It's to be patient and you want to saute these, stay close by, you don't want them to burn. Stir them regularly for about five to eight minutes and you're going to watch them develop some beautiful golden brown color. We're using caraway pans which are really nice and non-stick. If you're using another pan and it starts to kind of look dry or stick to the bottom, you can add in a little splash of water as needed just to get everything to release. But just keep sauteing those for the full five to eight minutes until it has that beautiful even color. Now another step to get a ton of color and flavor is to add in a few tablespoons of tomato paste and when it comes out of the can or the tube it's a bright red color and you are going to break it up in the pan mix it up with your aromatics and you want to keep cooking and stirring that until it goes from that fire red color to a deeper kind of rust color cooking out the raw bright tinny flavor of the tomatoes and it's gonna bring out all of the umami and the sweetness. It's gonna add so much depth to your lentil soup. We are using cumin, 
coriander, turmeric, and paprika. If you want to add a little something extra special, you can add in some garam masala if you keep that in your pantry. So add those spices in along with about a tablespoon of water just to get those to mix in with your tomato paste mixture. And you want to keep cooking that, stirring constantly for another minute or so just to cook out the raw flavor of the spices. Now you're going to add in your vegetable broth. And again, I think this is a recipe where you could use any kind of veggie broth you like. Now it's time to add in our red lentils. With these, you want to kind of pick over them to make sure there are no like little rocks or anything in them. And I rinse them thoroughly under cool water in a sieve until the water ran clear. If you find that you sometimes have difficulty digesting lentils, you can totally pre-soak these the night before or even a few hours before. Toss out that water, rinse them really thoroughly, and then you can add them into the soup pre-soaked. You'll just need to reduce the amount of vegetable broth that you add. And you can use different varieties of lentil in the soup, but I think the red lentils have the best texture because they kind of fall apart even and they just make the soup so thick and creamy and satisfying. So I add those in. I also add in my carrots, stir all of that together and you're gonna bring it up to a gentle boil. And then at this point, you're gonna reduce your heat to low or medium low. It's gonna depend on your exact stove and the pot you're using, but you wanna bring this to a gentle simmer and then you're gonna cover it and let it cook for 20 to 25 minutes, however long it takes until your lentils are nice and tender and the mixture has thickened up. Now, just like with our Tuscan kale and white bean soup, I like to add a nice creamy element at the end. This is optional, but I think adding something in with a little bit of that rich, fatty mouthfeel makes this just feel more satisfying and more like comfort food. So in this case, I'm using some full fat coconut milk. If you have access to an Asian market, I recommend using either the Aroy D or Chow Co brands. Those are my personal favorite in terms of texture and flavor. And I just like to add in about a half a cup of that. You can add in more or less depending on how creamy you want your soup to be. And then I also like to add in the juice of half a lemon. This helps to brighten all the flavors and really balance out all of that umami that we've really been working to develop in the soup. And it is ready to serve. I think this tastes really good with fresh cilantro if you're a cilantro fan. You can add a little extra drizzle of coconut milk to the top to make it pretty. Or if you have like a good unsweetened plain vegan yogurt, something like a coconut yogurt. If you have Kulina yogurt, I think that tastes really good. Kind of dolloped on top of chilies or lentil stew like this and you can enjoy. All right, so you've made this before. What's tangy in it? Lemon juice. Mmm, it's really good. It like really cuts through. I would usually top it with cilantro. We don't have any. Mm. It's so flavorful. We made basmati rice because Eric loves rice with everything. Everything. So you could eat it as is or with rice to make it more filling. I almost think it's better next day. I feel like that's true with a lot of stews, but it kind of thickens up a little bit, which I like. It's really good. I know it's like apples to oranges, but do you like the other soup or this one better? This one. Yeah? I was just curious if you had a, a first. No, I definitely thought. liked, I like this one more, but I like Indian flavors a lot, so. That is it for my two vegan budget-friendly meal ideas. I hope you draw some inspiration from this. If you wanna try out either of the recipes, they'll be on my blog, links down below. And if you do try them, I would love to know how they come out for you. If you follow us over on Instagram, you can tag us in a photo of the finished recipe. Make sure to subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this, more vegan recipes, recipe tests. Always feel free to leave video recommendations or requests down below, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.